Welcome back. This is part of a video series that we're doing on the HCI 3D scanning systems and the processes that we see used and use on a day-to-day -day basis with these scanners. This particular portion discusses the use of a software called Geomagic Control. This software is great for doing QC and analysis work on parts for either uh, one-off components and one-off parts or for doing full batch processing and automated analysis of parts coming off of an assembly line. So this is a very versatile software. It's very easy to use and it has a lot of really great features. So let's go ahead and jump on in here. If you notice we have a part in blue which is our scan part that we did earlier in the series and then we also have a part in yellow which is the physical CAD model of this part. So uh, the first thing we're going to notice is these two parts are not aligned. We have our CAD aligned to its correct CAD coordinate system however the 3D scan part being a, a 3D picture so to speak as we talked about in a previous video has no real specific coordinate system. It has no real geometry uh, associated with it yet. So we need to go ahead and start that process. Inside of Geomagic Control this is very easy. We simply press apply and it's going to go ahead and look for common data points and we can use those to very quickly and easily create a reference system. So, uh, quite often we need a little bit more of an advanced alignment than that. That's just a best fit alignment from one part to the next. So when more of a alignment is required, say we're wanting to pull off our specific datums, we can actually come up onto our part and best fit the CAD model or uh, go ahead and best fit some features onto the CAD model itself. So we've gone ahead and created three planes just based off of the pre-existing CAD geometry. And then from there, we can transfer that very quickly over to our scan data by simply using this auto create function. It's going to look for those areas of our scan model that are nearby the CAD. It will go ahead and use that to best fit these features, which right now we're just using planes. It'll go ahead and best fit those planes into place on the scan data. And now we have these features that are based off of the scan data. We have the actual CAD features, and we can use both of those in conjunction to do a feature-based alignment where we can create our pairs uh, and we have a hierarchy here, so just like your datum A would trump your datum B and datum C and so forth, we do the same thing here, and we can see those numbers run out. So uh, we can see the constraints on our first pair is zero and zero, and then we can start to see our numbers drift off as we see the degrees as well as the actual position drift from our second pair and our third pair. So now we have our correct alignment. We know that this is an imperfect real world part, so there are some deviations. We are seeing some real numbers, so we know that everything is working properly here. Uh, so we can start to get into some analysis. The very first thing that I like to do for my analysis is to simply do a 3D comparison. Uh, if you watched our advanced flex scan video we talked about how flex scan is able to do this process as well uh, however it's always great to come in and do this inside of geomagic control if you're just using this uh, as your mainstay inspection platform because we can add it into the workflow we can add it into our report and it's a great 3d visualization tool to be able to come in and quickly identify where there may be some problem areas in our model. So we can start to see some drift, we can see some high spots, some low spots, we can also see some blue over here <clears throat> and on the top where we're starting to drift in so we have some shrinkage on this part. 
So from here, we can go a little bit further in and really start driving some physical numbers out of this model. So in order to do that, let's create a cross section. So just like you would have a cross section view on a blueprint, we can quickly and easily come in and create a cross section view on our model. So we just chop this guy right down the middle through our XZ plane. And if we go to our 2D dimensioning, you can see we have two different uh, profiles here. If we zoom in, we have a purple pro profile and then a black profile. The black is our scan data and then the purple is our CAD. So we can use both of these together to quickly identify not only our measured value, but also our nominal value. Uh, so we don't have to have that as a known. We can pull that off of our CAD, we can give our tolerancing, and we can quickly do our dimensioning in this manner. So we can pull off a few different numbers here. We'll just do those two and then maybe an angle real quick. And you can see on all of these values that we created, we have down here our measured, our nominals, and then our status, whether it's a pass or a fail. So we can use it as just a simple pass-fail device, or we can actually look at the deltas and use this for better understanding what may be going on in our parts. So that covers our 2D dimensioning aspect. Uh, just like we created features earlier, we created those planes, we can come in here and create cylinders, lines, circles, really any basic geometry that you would want to understand. And because that's 3D geometry, we can do 3D dimensioning, which is very similar to our 2D dimensioning, but we can work in 3D space. Uh, and for time's sake, we won't go too deep into that, uh, but we will cover one other basic functionality, which is quite crucial to many people, uh, which is our GD&T. So we have uh, full GD&T capabilities here inside of Geomagic Control. Uh, because we didn't create any datums, uh, in this particular video, we'll just do some datumless callouts. Uh, but if you notice, we do have, if we go into, say, a true position, we have our full datum reference plane frame that we can set up. And we can come in and do true positioning uh, or, you know, your parallelism, perpendicularity, angularity, uh, whatever type of datum callouts that you may see on your blueprints we can come in and very easily quickly, uh, easily and quickly create here inside of Geomagic Control and do an analysis on. So once we've created those callouts, we can additionally come in and evaluate those callouts. And when we do that, we can see how the process works and it's quite impressive. We do have these numbers really low, so these are both gonna fail, um, but we can see the geometry that it actually uses for this analysis if we come in and look, this is all the geometry on that polygonal mesh, on that scan data that it's picking up. It's associating that it's close to the CAD, so that is where we should be doing our analysis. Uh, it's identifying that, and then that's what it's processing. Same thing for this top profile. So we're coming in, we're identifying that data, and then we're looking at it and doing an analysis on it. So it's a very a uh, powerful and easy to use tool for GDNT and it really compares to nothing else because we're working with 3D scan data we're taking into account millions and millions of data points uh, in a matter of a couple seconds so this is a very powerful platform okay with that being said we will go uh, from here into uh, being able to create a report so we can create a simple PDF report. We can also create HTML uh, reports is a very popular one and also CSV. So if you're wanting to take this out into a, another program, say you have uh, some sort of program that you want to have all your reports handled and controlled through, we can take it out to a CSV file, which is very uh, easy to format and use. So here's just a quick view of our report. This is a very generic report that we get out of Geomagic Control. 
and from here we're going to go ahead and finish this video with talking about the most impressive and powerful part of Geomagic Control which is the automation platform. So as we were speaking we created an automation routine. There was no additional steps necessary to automate the software. It automatically looks at the steps that we go through and creates that routine for us. So if we need to run that on one part or on a thousand parts, we can very quickly come in, run that automation, and we'll watch it automatically go through and process all that information that we took. So while our reports may take a little bit of time to set up, you can see it will go through and completely run through that all on its own in a matter of, of a few seconds. And this is a very, very powerful tool right here. We use this uh, quite often. And these are really just the basic highlights of Geomagic Control. There are a lot of other really powerful tools inside of here that we didn't cover. This video is really just to give you a good basic understanding as to the concept behind Geomagic Control, the types of ideas that we use it for, and to help you determine whether this would be a good fit for you to look further into and eventually go into purchasing and using. So. While this is finishing up, if you have any questions that we didn't cover in this video, feel free to give us a call or shoot us an email here at GoMeasure3D. Uh, we can see that we just finished that automation process. And we'll see that report pop up here in just a second. And there she goes. So thank you very much for taking a look at this video and we look to see you on the next one.